Diplexer sure again, welcome back to the Great War Realism mod. It's time for some more World War I action. This one's gonna be a classic. Just look at this no man's land. It's about to be very, very bloody. And if you wanna skip straight to the bloodshed, be my guest. There's gonna be a timestamp down in the comment section below, taking you straight to the battle. For those of you who don't mind me talking a little bit about the very battle, uh, do sit tight. It's only going to be a few minutes. So, this is a classic looking No Man's Land map made by Axel. Um, he has made a few World War One maps that we've used previously, including the, uh, uh, the winter version of Lorraine. This is actually still in the Lorraine area, uh, but it's a different battle, I suppose. Um, but it's dur during the same time frame, I think. Uh, but yeah, we used that for a really cool German assault on French positions in a winter town in Lorraine. Um, I think it was like the winter of 1914 to 1915, of course, because that's the period this battle is set in as well. Uh, he also made the fort map that we used uh, for both the World War One and World War Two tug of war. Having that fort as the scene or like the the as the setting, rather, was absolutely amazing. I think we had some of the coolest tug-of-war fighting ever, uh, especially the World War I battle. I loved the use of grenades, pistols, machine guns, and rifles, seeing the Brits, Russians, and I do believe French, of course, yes, of course, uh, making their way up that slope, that breach against the Ottomans, Germans, and Italians. No, Wait a minute, Ottomans, Germans, and Austrians, I do believe. Yes, we swapped the Austrians for Italians for the World War II tug of war. Yes, indeed. So cool, man. So cool. And then we swapped the... Who did we swap? I think we swapped the French for the Americans, of course, for the World War II one. Right? Pretty sure I nailed it, guys. Pretty sure I remembered. Anyway, guys, so we're not going to be for too long. Uh, let me just go ahead and quickly tell you what's going on. Um, we've got 100 Frenchmen, 100 Germans. Uh, both teams have three machine guns each. They're all spread out around the battlefield, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, every 150 seconds, which is just about two and a half minutes, another 100 men will be deployed per side. So... Once the 10 minute mark has passed, at least for the battle itself, um, a total of 1,000 soldiers will have set foot on this battlefield. I can assure you, 1,000 soldiers will not be standing, that's for sure. But it'll be brutal as hell. There's going to be so much artillery. And let me just go ahead and read really quickly here what the developer has said about this particular battle. And that will explain why I have spread out 200 uh, men and soldiers primarily around this battlefield um, randomly. So, yes, that's right. There's no real clear lines here, and that's the brutal, brutal part about this battle. I had to say that twice. Brutal, brutal. Anyway, the Battle of bois le prêtre uh, took place in Lorraine from the end of 1914 to 1915. After a short time of big advances on both sides, the fight transformed into slow and gruesome trench warfare in this dense forest. Well, what used to be. It's like someone took a two-blade shitty Bic racer and ran it through the beard and left a lot of these stumps here and there, but still, it's it's just like straight through. So much artillery and shit have just torn this apart. But it used to be a dense forest, so that's cool. It, it used to look like the flanks. Anyway, um, um, but, but, but the lines were particularly close, and sometimes the enemy was just behind a sandbag wall, sharing the trench with you. This led to heavy use of grenades and underground mines. So that's why I've spread these guys out. They're all on free move. Yeah, there are some rear lines here and there, but it's not going to matter much. Everyone's just, you know, fighting each other in these close quarter trenches. I don't know what that sound is. I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Welcome back, everybody, to the start of the battle. We're going to go ahead and click start and watch as this unfolds in front of us. It's just going to be an all-out crazy fight. Plenty of artillery. I'm going to leave the camera static for like 30 seconds so that you guys can actually see all the individual soldiers on the battlefield. It's really hard to see them once, they're, once your camera is moving around. But you can see grenades going off, uh, explosions here and there. Oh, that's awesome. You can see the French coming in from the right. You can see the Germans coming in from the left. Artillery striking practically every second. So let's uh, dig down here and uh, see what we got. Oh.
Oh, that was nasty. Let's move over here to the far right flank, seen from the French perspective. You can tell how close they are. Look at them. They're being blown away. Lots of German pistols being used. We have two officers here leading the charge. We've got more French soldiers crawling their way down into the trench to fight the Germans up close. I love this stuff, especially the hand grenades. They're they're quite addictive in some in some weird way. So close. Let's move down the line. Artillery impacting, destroying parts of the defensive structures here around the trenches. Like, look at this. We've got Germans here on the right side and then Frenchmen here on the left side. There's literally just like 10 meters separating them both. It's it's so close. And grenades... I mean, everyone is within grenade range, which is brutal as hell. Anywhere you throw it, you're going to land on enemies. And that's... that's uh, a pretty concerning thought. Let's move over here to the left side. Slightly larger distances here between the two fighting teams. Um, kind of a different terrain as well. We've got a big open field here on the left side. A lot of barbed wire. And you can tell that there are sections of these trench lines that have been, like, walled off to prevent the enemy from just, like, sneaking into your, to your own trench line. So this is a great example over here to, to display that. There are a few other locations around this trench system where you can tell that the French and Germans have established like borders to prevent the enemy from, from, uh, from sneaking in. Like over here is another great example. The French even have a small concrete wall that they can cover behind and fire into this intersection here in case any Germans do break in. So that's really cool. I believe the first wave has been deployed. Maybe even the second wave. But this is just like, look at how close they are to each other here. That's so awesome. What an absolute meat grinder. Holy shit, lots of artillery here just shaking up the earth. Sandbags being thrown everywhere. There's little actual signs of the trenches left. You just have the, what looks like natural um, moats or just like natural trenches in the dirt. A lot of the sandbags and wooden structure uh, maintaining the actual structure of the uh, the earth is is just being shook up by all the artillery fire and hand grenades exploding practically everywhere over on this side the Germans uh, that was another wave spawning in for sure uh, the Germans do seem to have this one under lockdown the French struggle to gain a good footing here um, but that's a German victory on this side it might not mean that they are winning elsewhere that's a good throw by the Oh, the NCO, but I think everyone's gonna live through that explosion, not be hit by any shrapnel. There's a lot of troops gathering here. This could be a French breakthrough. This could be a French breakthrough. It's important to dominate the flanks. Oh! Yeah, the Germans might have lost their grip. Grenades are being thrown to clear out the trenches. That's two very deadly German grenades. Just obliterating the French troops. Another one is being thrown. Yeah, they're forced back and the Germans are reclaiming this flank. I love watching a flank like this and seeing how it develops, how it changes hands back and forth. That's super awesome. All right, let's move down the line a bit. What's going on over here? 
the French have kind of lost this center. Uh, they used to have troops here. Now the Germans are all around it. So that's a small win for the Germans. How are we doing further down over here on the left side? There's like definitely a, a literal no man's land because there's like no one here in the center. It's too open. It's too deadly. So both nations avoid sending troops here. They're focusing on other areas that even to me appear to be more deadly than this. But yeah, that's that's how they think. Such a difference here in combat. On this far left side, their range is longer. The the brutalness is less personal. No hand grenades are being used here. You're just unfortunate if you're hit by enemy artillery. And the Germans have established a nice line here along the barbed wire. They're not really moving uh, in on the French side through the trench. This uh, blockade here is working excellently uh, to keep the, uh, the Germans out. But on the French side, they seem to be a bit disorganized. A little bit out of cover. But such a different fight. You know, we're, we're going to let this one evolve here. Um, and move back into the center and right side. I think it's the, the more brutal part of this battlefield. And it's somewhere we definitely want to keep an eye on. Alright, the Germans have had through in the center. That must mean the third wave has spawned. So... That means, uh, what, 800 men have set foot on the field now, including the 200 already spawned at the start of the fight. Yeah, the Germans are flooding through right now, and I love the way the AI actually crawls up using the terrain to remain in cover. Sometimes you will see the AI crawl um, in the trenches in a long line, kind of like a snake, um, using the... Uh, earth walls as cover it's it's super cool actually it's it's it looks so systematic and organized organic one could say yeah they've they've definitely captured the french center leaving a lot of french troops at a distance i don't know if this will swing in their favor but the germans are so focused around here so they have a lot of firepower in one area but if one strike hits here. If one arty strike hits, I mean, they're gonna lose more than a dozen men and pretty much their hold of the center. So that's something you want to keep an eye on. I think the French machine guns are probably working for full effect right now. Can I hear a Hotchkiss back here? Yeah. He's just slanging rounds. Slanging rounds downrange. That's exactly what the Germans wanted to avoid. Taking a nasty hit in the middle of a lot of infantry. As you can tell, their numbers have gone down. We might even see a few Germans start backpedaling soon. Which means they are kind of forced to retreat. You can see an overall pattern among just a few soldiers. They will signal what the AI is thinking. Like, what is the entire computer player controlling the Germans thinking right now? Is it time to pull back? Is it time to advance? You can tell by just looking at a few individual soldiers and how they move. It's it's pretty cool. So on this far right side, well, the French aren't entirely out, right? Let's, let's actually admit to the fact that they do have a soldier here on the right side of the road. But um, it's not looking good at all. I don't know when they lost the upper hand. A, a few bad hand grenades... Or a few good ones by the Germans, I suppose. A few unlucky artillery strikes. Uh, too many men getting close to German machine guns. Who knows? All I know is war is never fair. But the numbers are fair in this case. And right now... The Germans are winning big. Oh, beautiful hit right in the center. There goes, like, at least a handful of German troops. All gone, never to return. We can see a breakthrough here on the right side as well. They're getting through the, the barbed wire. Look, they're crawling up here in the trench. Staying low, staying safe. 
This is going to significantly increase their chances of surviving artillery, unlike that guy. This entire side is just taking so much MG fire, you can tell all the impacts. That uh, Hotchkiss machine gun doesn't have a very large magazine, so it fires in quick short bursts. And then it has to reload, but it's really cool to see it impact the ground. Oh, that was a pretty good RD strike, not gonna lie. How are we doing here on this opposite side? Well, I think the Germans have completely pushed the French back over here. Yeah, I mean, they've just completely taken over this flank. We've definitely uh, reached the end of reinforcements. So the French won't be receiving any more troops. That's a good arty hit as well. That's going to knock out this French machine gun. At least its crew and a few nearby soldiers. But, you know, we still have Frenchmen here holding the trench. It's going to be a matter of minutes until they fall, though, because these guys coming in here from the flank are starting to move up. That's so cool, though. So I think we can actually start looking at casualties while the Germans just wrap up the remaining bits here of the French defense. We're going to mark the uh, French casualties in yellow and the German casualties in red. And, well, I got to tell you, it does look pretty even. Mind you, of course, the arty does remove a lot of bodies. So it actually looks like the Germans have lost more men at a quick glance, but, um, well, okay, we're gonna have to do without enabling the HUD, so we won't be having a look at the MG casualties today, but I do suppose the Germans uh, cleaned up quite nicely. Um, it's, it's a tricky landscape because there are so many small, like, hills and ups and downs and stuff, and lots of objects, so uh, the static machine guns don't really have too great a field of view and and vision and all that so I don't think they've done too much I think the arty hitting constantly all over the battlefield have cost both teams about the same amount of casualties it definitely depends but overall you know maybe a few really good German arty strikes took out just a few too many Frenchmen but yeah you know it's not over and I think we're looking at maybe 20 25 remaining German troops attacking which is a very small number considering the size of the battle so having that said I hope you guys enjoyed this fight thank you once again Axel for making this map and I'll see you guys in another video tomorrow ciao